Hey everybody, Future Dylan here. Sorry about the interruption right here, especially at the beginning of the podcast, but I just want to let you guys know that there's this somewhat of an audio issue for the first 30 seconds of the pod. Hopefully you can get through it and then we're back on track. Let's get into the show. Steven. A little crazy, a little crazy bit of a September, but um, glad, glad to be back on here. Um, there's a lot of stuff in gaming, like literally, like what we missed about a week, week or so. And yeah, we missed some good stuff. Uh, like we at least have two weeks of content to cover here. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna if if we decided that before. Before we even favorite segments <laughs> and uh, my collector collection in corner to figure out today, you can turn it off. You don't turn. Yeah, I um obviously you were here to test the demo out. Um, it is rough. Oh, it's so rough. Um, but yeah, I, I did stream it um over the weekend and um I I think I mean obviously it's like the, the more you play the better you get, but I really think um <laughs> I think I did better that time around at least. But no, it, it was a lot of fun. Um and just to show you how tedious the levels are, just replaying what all three levels, both on modern and retro, took me about an hour and a half. So, Ooh. yeah, yeah there's a lot of stuff to get in those. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know. It's fun though. I liked it. Yeah, it was really fun when I played it with you at your uh, place last Wednesday. Uh, you actually planned on recording a standard dermatologist video for YouTube, and it got to be like. 10 o'clock almost <laughs> i was like oh geez i gotta go home we both had to work the next day <laughs> I, I i did record gameplay though so i nice. i i just have to kind of just piece them together and post them um i think i have one pretty much ready for snow way out but um yeah i i just i planned on just getting those out before the release next friday yeah that that's Jeez, what eight or nine days? Nine days, yeah. Nine days from today. Uh, that's wild to think about. It's been, they announced it in June, and time feels like it's just kind of flown since then. Yeah, for real. But speaking of other announcements from June, I mean, one of them was announced in like December. Uh, the PlayStation 4. And the or PlayStation Five, excuse me, and the Xbox X Series X, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, those pre-orders! Like I know everybody put them up for pre-order at the same time, and what happened? So, so the PS Five actually, well, supposedly mistakenly had gone up for pre-order a week prior from the Series X. So whenever they had their conference. Um, like announcing the release date of the console and the price and everything like that. Mm. Um, they had the, the head of uh, marketing for Sony. Uh, actually, it was on the 16th. I'm sorry. September 16th is actually whenever they went out for pre-order because that's whenever you came over to play the demo. Um, that same day, they, you know, the head of Sony was like, hey, I'm sorry, head of marketing was like, you know, don't worry about pre-orders. We'll have everything all um uh organized and ready for you guys to you know get your hands on the console blah 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 you know how that goes and literally moments from him saying that um the Walmart Twitter <laughs> had posted i think it was a i think they posted like a poop emoji saying that they you know they had PS5s ready for pre-order get them while you can 
and then from there on, like I mean, Best Buy, GameStop, um, Target, they all put theirs out for pre-order too, and they were gone within moments. Uh, I know a couple of people I work with actually um, stayed up till two o'clock in the morning just to get their hands on a PS5. Um, and then Xbox had made a Twitter post saying that, you know, they were just trying to shit talk on um, PlayStation, but they were just saying like, hey, you know, we'll have a more organized um, pre-order or pre-orders go live on November. I'm sorry, no, not November. Um, September 22nd. Is today. Which was, and- yeah, and it was no better. I mean, all the Xboxes were gone within moments. Which is not surprising because if you really think about it, you have the ability to pre-order from, and I'm going to count on my fingers because, you know, GameStop, Best Buy, Walmart, Amazon, Target, and other small retailers. Yeah. All gone. Both consoles are all gone. Yep. It's insane. Now, Sony did apologize on their Twitter and said that... um, they were like, honestly, you know, it could have went better. Um, we do apologize and don't worry. More consoles will come out soon for pre-order. Um, which yeah. was, you know, I, I mean, I look at it from both ways. I think it's awesome that they said something. But at the same, at the same time, you can't tell me that they didn't mean to do that. 100%. From a marketing play, now everybody wants a PS5. Yeah, they're like, oh, wow. You can't get one. I'm going to buy one. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I kind of, I'm not going to get one for a long time if I even get one. If I was able to get one that day and, you know, pay the $50 to get up or whatever to reserve one and then, you know, just pay it off over time, I would 100% flip it. I'm not going to lie. I I, I would keep it. (laughs) I know you would keep it. You're going to get one eventually anyway. Yeah. For me for me though, like the only game that's really coming out for my taste is really Ratchet and Clank. So you know, a, but, a lot of people aren't giving it love, but I think Sack uh Sackboy's Big Adventure looks great. I would say that would be the other game that I'd probably pick up. Um all actuality, like it for what, five hundred, you sell it for a thousand, you buy two more, you keep one of them. You sell the other one you for however much seven fifty this time. It, yeah, secondhand market for this kind of stuff is going to be wild, especially if there aren't much more pre-orders. Yeah, but I'm sure there will be more pre-orders just on the basis you know Sony's saying there is Xbox or Microsoft. On the other other hand, you never know with them; they're kind of like they're real tricky. Yeah, I am, um, and I. I, I guess I guess we should actually just jump in. I, I know I had it later in the list, but I think we should uh, talk about um, the third item we had, or fourth, I'm sorry. Uh, I think what drove a lot of the pre-orders is, this came out of left field too, but Xbox purchased Bethesda. Like, like That is huge. Yeah, that, that's a big one. So Bethesda, remind me, does um, um, they, Overwatch? No, no, so that's Blizzard. But um, yeah, um, That's what I was thinking of. But Bethesda does, um, they do Fallout. They do the Elder Scrolls, which includes like Skyrim um, and everything in that genre. There's Wolfenstein, um, Doom. I'm trying to think what else they have. Uh, Prey. They, they have a bunch of franchises under Bethesda, uh, Evil Within. Um, but th- those are all going to be Xbox exclu- Xbox exclusives now. That's huge. Yeah, it's pretty. That's I mean, that's gigantic because that those are all console sellers. Yeah. So well, like on top of that too. I mean, there's three or four games that PlayStation had announced with the PlayStation five that were Bethesda games that aren't coming out yet. So that kind of puts it up in the air. Like, well, what's going to happen with those games? I mean, no statement has been made yet, but, um, that, that was, that was a huge power play. I mean, that, that would be almost as big as PlayStation purchasing Activision. 
which probably wouldn't ever happen because Activision would want so much money for that. Oh yeah, the, I mean, with Activision alone, you get call. Uh, need to get a bunch of people like, oh, you, I can't play Call of Duty on my Xbox. Well, like, yeah, I mean, well, even if they did that, I mean, that's Call of Duty, Spyro, Crash, um, Overwatch, because they own Blizzard, World of Warcraft. Yep. Uh, Diablo, correct? Diablo, yeah. Jeez, oh, yeah. I mean, that, 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 obviously, that, that would that would never happen. But, um, but hey, you know, I never thought Bethesda would be bought by Microsoft. So. <laughs> uh, Bethesda was like always one of those companies that's like too big to be bought, and then you're like, wait, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's I. I I'm definitely not getting an Xbox. I'll say that. I'm definitely not getting an Xbox. I did not get an Xbox One. I had an Xbox 360 at one point, I think. But if I'm going to get another console other than a Switch, I get the PlayStation 5. You do have in your notes the Switch Pro. So, I mean, obviously that's been out in, like, I mean, like, people have been talking about it for forever. Um, a lot of it, honestly, has probably not been rumor. I mean, it's been rumors more than anything. Um, but Nintendo, I think, made a statement saying that they didn't have any interest in making a new console. Um, but they had, they had like, I think they filed for a patent for like a new device or something. Um, but I, I don't really know, honestly, too much about that. But They've said they ha- they haven't made a statement about a Switch Pro or anything along that line. So there was a listing. Um, I want to say I think it was in Poland on one of the major uh, retail, like online retail uh, marketplaces in Europe. They had a listing for a Switch version two. Um, so I, I don't know if it's necessarily a Switch Pro, but it's definitely a new version of the Switch, which um, NVIDIA, which they made the graphics card specifically for the original Switch, had, um, I think they had made a comment about Nintendo. They they were working working with Nintendo to create um, like a new graphics card. Uh, so, I mean, it, it could even be just a, like, a, you know, like a, a better enhanced Switch that probably could be in our near future here. Um, I hope that's the case because um, this is just my opinion. I don't think the switch needs to have more like it it doesn't need to have the same power as like a PlayStation or an Xbox. Honestly, it's not what the switch is. You know, like they're not in the same field, Um, but I do think it needs to be just a little bit more powerful uh, and a little bit more optimal for like the hybrid users. So a lot of people like even like you, they just like you just leave it docked mainly and you just use it as a standard home console. Um, But just have, but like, so like if it was more optimized for that, like to give you at least a 4k or at least a 1440 P resolution um, and a lot of their games already run at 60, honestly, but maybe maybe just to like get improved frame rate. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I, honestly, I think Nintendo would just hit it out of the park again if they did that. Um, not even having to call it a Switch Two or anything, just a new like, you know, like mid console uh, life cycle, which Nintendo always does with their consoles anyway. So I mean, it's which, it's not that big of a deal. Call it the Switch U. <laughs> they might as well they're you know porting over all the Wii U games. Um Yeah, and we're getting what 3D World Super Mario 3D World minimum <laughs> right now at least. I think it's the last of the big ones. I definitely think they're gonna do a Zelda uh you know collection Here's probably here. for their for the thirty fifth. Next year. And this Mario thirty fifth though really has kinda it's been hit or miss. Uh, I know in the pod, the last podcast that we had Jared on as a guest uh, on, uh, we talked 
you know, a miss would be the Pumas that they really hyped up and they sold out within minutes and nobody knew that they were even available to buy. But I would say a huge hit has been, you know, 3D All-Stars. Like I have been playing it. I know you've been playing it. Mm-hmm. You know, Jared gave up on Mario 64 already. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, that's all I wanted out of the 35th was 3D All-Stars. And now that I have it in my hands, I it re- there's really nothing else I'm looking forward to besides th- besides 3D World. I want that game so bad on my Switch. I really enjoyed playing that game, and I think I was in college where that came out. But yeah, I I never played 64. I never had a Nintendo 64, first of all. And then I really never played Nintendo or Mario 64 until, like, at least heavily until this came out. And I mean, nostalgia wise, it's great. Uh, you know, you can, you know, run around Peach's Castle and you can all do, do all that kind of stuff and you can wall jump in, you know. But control wise, I am not the biggest fan. I think I told you I'm just trying to get through it to get to sunshine because somewhere in my weird brain it's like beat this to beat this to beat this yeah i i I, see like for me um a lot of people might argue with me on this but i don't really think 64 lacks in the sense of control wise i think it can i think it controls fine but i think the way the controls are set up the the level design isn't the best like it's a lot of narrow paths like and like I mean, you can run off the edge like without even trying. Well, I mean, not that you would yeah. ever try, but I mean, like you could just slightly move to the left and you're dead. Yeah, the camera really goofs you up too. Yeah, the camera's terrible. <laughs> like it, it, it's nice that you can kind of control it, but you can only control it in like spurts. So it'll, like you hit the you know right joystick and it'll move it like a foot, and then you have to hit it again and again and again for it to keep on moving. That's something I've been getting used to. I think at this point I have 53 stars and you need 70 to at least complete the um, story, which is all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to get the 120 stars. That's out Mm -hmm. of my wheelhouse. Yeah, I'm going to get the bare minimum beat Bowser and move on. I mean, I'm nowhere near that. But see, like, I think I, I think we were talking about this the other night, but like. With the the controls not being so great and the level design kind of not, you know, working hand in hand with that. It's still, it's still like, isn't a terrible game. Like it's still like, I think it's just so charming that it still stands out to be a good game. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, I, my girlfriend, at least, um, we were, I was playing and she's watching. She's like, when are you going to stop? Because I couldn't get like, this one star. And it was like, I'm going to get this star. I'm going to beat, I'm going to get all six stars from this level. And I'm turning off. I needed like one more. She's like, it's been 45 minutes, Dylan. You're still working on the same star. You, the other stars you got like in a total of 20 minutes, you got five other stars. I'm like, I need to get it. I need to get it. Like the game draws you in to the collectathon aspect of it. Yeah. Probably stars at least. But then like after that, I'm like, okay, I feel good to put this down. You know, like that was enough. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can't wait. Mainly because you haven't played it before, I can't wait for you to get the sunshine because that's my favorite one. Yeah, it's I, super fun. I haven't played Sunshine. I've played Gal. I know I've played Galaxy. The only thing that bothers me about Galaxy, and I can't speak too much on Sunshine yet, at least. Um, am I wrong in saying that you can only play with the Joy Cons separated? Like kind of like the Wii U or uh, like the Wii, Wii mode and nunchuck. Can you I, use the pro controller? I, I don't know a hundred percent. I don't think that you need the joy cons now. No, because I think yeah. they implemented the, um, like the motion controls. Like I, I think, cause I mean, the pro controller has the motion controls in it too. Um, mm-hmm. but I know that, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what they did, like docked wise. But I know for handheld that you're able to use the touch screen, like to do anything you need to do, like motion wise. Uh, but no, they optimized it for the controller, though. Yeah, I would have. I would have struggled through that one if it had to 
use the motion controls. And, and honestly, that's the one I missed. So like I was half tempted just to start Galaxy and play it. Um, because I've I played two, but I've never played the first Mario Galaxy. So I was kind of half tempted just to start with that one because that's the one that I have not played yet. I think I played that. It came out in like 08. I played that in like was high that, school. Was that bef- was that in 08? Let me check. I don't know, because Sunshine was 2003. Seven. Super Mario Galaxy was 2007 platform. Video game developed and published by Nintendo. Because 09 was Galaxy 2, I think. Yes. I think I originally played Galaxy 1 in like 08, because I moved the Switch to my bedroom whenever I was in middle school or high school. I can't remember. And that soundtrack on there is fantastic. I remember playing uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 a little bit more, though, I think. That's the only one I played. <laughs> I, I remember, I, because like, I remember at the time, it was like, it was like right around the time that like, Galaxy 2 came out, you couldn't find Galaxy 1 anywhere, so I actually couldn't, like, I couldn't pick it up and buy it. That, and plus it was our, it was still 60 bucks, so I was like, well, I could just get the new one. Yeah, these games resell... For or like they're gonna be sixty dollars for the rest of our lives. Probably if not, they'll go up. Yeah. So believe it or not, this collection was actually a steal. Yeah, because first of all, you're getting each of these games for twenty bucks. I know the Super Nintendo or Super Mario sixty four console or cartridge itself goes for eighty on day. Oh, it's not more. Yeah, and that's more than the entire price of the three games themselves. Mm-hmm. I'm actually looking that up right now. It's definitely well worth it. And you said that they had a really great, you know, weekend in sales. Yeah, I didn't see the exact number, but I mean, it's to no surprise that it was the highest grossing, you know, game the release that day. And probably for the whole next week. <laughs> uh, WWE Battlegrounds game released that day. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that game didn't even have a chance. <laughs> it looks awful too, but um, yeah, I guess Super Mario 64 has really gone down in price on eBay though since this came out because it looks like they're for thirty five ish, which is still pricey for a 25 year old game Mm. Uh, hey not bad still but i would definitely pick it up dylan's expert suggestion says to buy the game especially since they're going to be pulling it in march yeah for for real march 31st is going away forever unless you have it so so it says that you know, the game managed to overtake the the last week's number one Marvel Avengers spot, being to a top ten, which features no less than four, but no less than four Switch exclusives. Um, the ever present Animal Crossing New Horizons is also right up there, sitting in third place for a second consecutive week. So, um, Super Mario Three D All Stars was number one. Um, yeah, it was Super Mario Three D All Stars. In the first place, Marvel Avengers in second place, Animal Crossing in third, Tony Hawk in fourth, Mario Kart eight still in fifth place. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and then oh, guess what, Dylan? WWE 2K Battlegrounds in sixth place. Um, seventh was Minecraft. Eight is Minecraft Dungeons, and then Grand Theft Auto still in number ten. <laughs> Holy crap! Yeah. Hmm. I, whenever I hear that list in general, I hear Grand Theft Auto, Minecraft, and uh, Mario Kart Eight, and I'm just like, these games have been out, yeah, for, for forever, multiple for multiple console generations. Yep. <laughs> so, and they're still in the top ten, which means that people really need to kick it in high gear and actually put out games, mm-hmm. good games. Crash, I I see being two. I don't know if it'll overtake. All-Star, 3D All-Stars? No, it's definitely not yeah. going to overtake 3D All-Stars. 
I see it being a strong number two. I want to say two or three, yeah. I mean, Animal Crossing, I haven't even turned... Uh, you know me, I was on Animal Crossing every single day for the last six months. I haven't even turned that on since I got 3D All-Stars, so... Well, like, um, even if, like, I, I mean, if Crash is able to get up there at all in the top ten, it's going to be great, which I think it will. I mean, honestly, there's not a lot coming... There's not a lot coming out, you know, like, towards this end of the year. So, um... I think it's going to do great either way, but it's still good for Activision because um, Tony Hawk is still number four. So they have yeah. Tony Hawk and Crash in there. It's going to do them pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I've i seen a bit of Tony Hawk gameplay and, it, you know, it's Tony Hawk. I bought it. I love it. Nice. It, it's, it, uh, it's honestly like, like they, they, they brought like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much you played of Tony Hawk when you were younger, but like they took the con- it, like they took the controls from three and four and implemented them into the first two, so it plays super smooth. That's good then. But uh, yeah, I mean, if I had a PlayStation, I'd get it. I'll be having a or I'll have a PlayStation probably this weekend, so I might pick it up. It's pretty good. I enjoy it, and I devote all my time. Uh, after October 2nd, pretty much to Crash. So, um, speaking of Crash, though, there has been a lot of news in this last week for Crash. Well, they released an entirely new, what, two-minute gameplay trailer? Yeah, it was the... Uh, it was the... Uh, the reveal trailer, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Not, not reveal. I, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I think they called it the gameplay trailer. Yeah, it was the launch gameplay launch trailer. Yeah. I was trying to think what the word was. It was the launch. Wow, I think it looks great. I mean, they almost kind of played it off like a like a movie trailer. Yeah, it looks. You know, I I I don't know what to say about it because I am just excited. Um, it's cool to see see Dingo Dial in kind of like a two D platforming aspect. But I mean, come on, the retro crash skin. Oh my goodness, yeah. I am pumped about that. Yeah. That's probably gonna be my main go to. I, I bet you that you're it's probably gonna be locked behind completing all the flash the flashback tapes. Oh, it's gonna be the last one you get, one hundred percent. And then they revealed the last ma- last mask since the last time we talked. Akano, yeah. Yeah, it's like the mask of like or and chaos or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's gonna be my favorite. So like, it's it kind of like replaces the death tornado, um, or triple spin, wow, any double spin, whatever people want to call death it. Tornado, yeah, <laughs> just call oh. it the death tornado because that's not that's <laughs> not an or that's not offensive at all. Um, but like, yeah, you're you're able to shoot projectiles back at enemies you're, you're able to glide over across the um, you know huge gaps and stuff it looks pretty good I, mean, I think it looks awesome and I, th- I think it doesn't stop until you either press the um attack button or x again no no x because it'll hover but i don't know yeah. it looks good yeah I, and i love the color scheme of it too I, I think i love the whole color palette of the entire game it's like a bunch of oranges and purples and blues and like it's all very vibrant uh playing the demo with you i was like this is a great looking game yeah um even like um i i think it's a lot more puzzly like i, f- I feel like they put like a lot more puzzles into it which i like um it requires a lot of thinking a lot of hand-eye coordination and a lot of patience, but it definitely feels like a crash game though. Are you going to play on retro mode or modern mode? Retro mode. I, I, I was feeling that as well. I know when I redid the demo, we had quite a few game overs playing retro mode. Yes. I mean, you, I'm, I mean, you have to think about it though. Like, it's kind of harder on the demo because you can't really rack up lives like enough to, yeah, be able to lose them. I mean, like, it only starts you off with five. You probably die at least 
three or four times before you even get to the bonus round. But like, that's what's nice about retro mode is like, the more you learn, the more you accumulate lives, the more Whomper fruit you collect. Um, I think that was the biggest thing that was hard for us in the demo. Because, like, right off the bat, I mean, like, everything feels different. So, like, I, I mean, we've been playing Crash for, what, 20 plus years. <laughs> so it was kind of hard adjusting to dying every three seconds. Yeah. That's tough. But I, I definitely like it. Um, in terms of how I feel about it, it's I still put it above Crash 3. <laughs> Still do. Yeah, because I mean, Crash Two is still my favorite, but um, I'm 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 just not a fan of Crash Three. Yeah, I I can definitely see that. I, mean, I, mean, I like it, but it's my least favorite. Yeah, out of the four so far, my least favorite probably one. That's I just because that. I I I didn't really grow up with one. I mean, I grew up with Crash in general, but I mainly grew up with two and three. Mm-hmm. Uh, one a little bit like later on, I was probably like, I was probably friends with you before I even started playing Ash One. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, um, I don't know, there's something about Crash Bandicoot in general that you know is just like addicting almost. This is just gonna kind of drive into that even more. Well, it's funny because we went over, um, we went over to um, my mom's, and my brother had it on his PlayStation, and the all well, the demo. And my my cousin Zach came over, and I mean, like he he's played Crash, but like obviously not not as extensively as us. But um, he came over and tried the demo, and he he was actually like, well. I think that I might actually break down and buy this game because this is super addicting. And I kind of felt like kind of a bad player because how many times did we die, Dylan? I mean, just starting out. I mean, what we, I think we died 40 times before we beat Snow Way out. Yeah. So and we at least pass, we, we were doing retro mode and every time we get a game over, we pass the control to the other person. There's quite a few passes. So Zach beat it in like 14 deaths. Because Zach is <laughs> Zach. <laughs> I was like, well, OK, then. But no, it's definitely fun. And I can't wait to play it next week. Very excited for it. And we're going to both be... Are you going to go for your pre-order when they first open? Oh, yeah. All right, then I'll have to meet you there. We have, we'll have to coordinate because I have... Because <laughs> I will be... We're pre-ordering. We pre-ordered from the same spot and we're going to live stream some of it? Yeah, we can. Oh, I'm not opposed to it. I could... On Twitch, East Coast will probably get it for every other, everybody else. I think GameStop opens at like 10 a.m. If we live stream at 10 30 a.m., everybody will be able to see it. So, there we go. Come and follow us on twitch.tv slash nerdologist gaming. Is that yeah, the that, that's the handle? There we go. Be there, be square. But, uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm just pumped about it. In general, just genuinely pumped about it. Um, something else I am pumped about, though, as well, is, and I didn't even know it was coming. Um, in the short Nintendo Direct, they announced Hy- Hyrule Warriors Calamity. Yes, the prequel to Breath of the Wild, which is top five favorite games of all time for me. Oh, oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I, I'm pumped about that, and I'm pumped to, to see kind of that, you know, cool. And then on top of that, Breath of the Wild sequel is still coming out, so they're like, then I guess what? Creative of Time and Majora's Mask, there hasn't really been sequels or prequels for Legend of Zelda. Yeah. So, 
I, 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 awesome. I kind of like that they're kind of making um, Breath of the Wild its own franchise. So mm-hmm. it's actually pretty cool to see them doing a lot with that um, universe. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very beautiful looking universe. And on top of that, you have great characters. You have fish fetishists uh, <laughs> out there and people who like uh, Jarrett who love the bird in it. What? Uh, I'm and Jared loves the jerk bird. That's because he uh, likes Falco. Falco. <laughs> Jared, I, I hope uh, if you listen to this, text me that you do not like Falco. Because <laughs> I know you're not going to listen to this. But um, being said, I am just like I'm pumped. I'm genuinely pumped about everything that's coming to Nintendo other than... I mean, I'm pumped for the even Game and Watch to come, but I think just pumped for all 3D All Stars, right? It's like, and this comes out in November, so this is like Nintendo's holiday release, November twentieth. So it's the holiday release. It's going to be right before Black Friday, the Friday probably before Black Friday. I had a guess. I'm. Mm. Just, I, I I want a physical copy of this game, um, yeah. mainly because I have Breath of the Wild physical um but i'm super excited um you get to play as any of the guardians which looks pretty cool but uh i don't know if you've ever played a high rule i don't know if you've ever played hyrule warriors before i demoed it oh okay um i never really played it though so it's it's the first one was the first one was decent the combat was really good but what i like to see is that they actually took a lot of the combat from Breath of the Wild and integrated it with their own um, unique combat style for Hyrule Warriors. But I just love that it's like a mindless button mashing mayhem. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I am pumped about it. I think it's going to be great. Um, and it looks, I've been saying I'm it looks story driven too. So that, that, that'll be interesting. You no, know, I've been saying I'm pumped a lot during this podcast, but this is the first time in a while, even, I mean, I'm pumped to do this podcast and talk to my, you know, best friend about video games, but I have not really been pumped about video games. You know, if I'm being uh-huh. completely honest, as of recently, I've been more yeah. pumped about other things, you know, Funkos or, you know, movies. And But I am genuinely excited for what is coming to consoles, Switch included. I'm not going to talk crap on Nintendo today, even though I did the last two podcasts, really. <laughs> I'm I'm just excited for what's coming. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the game that they need this year because I think Super Mario All Stars was a unexpected surprise, and I feel like it appeals to to a wider audience. Um, I th- I think as safe as it is being Zelda, but um, I think Hyrule Warriors is more of a risky title to be their like holiday title to be honest because i mean not a lot of people picked up the first one not to say it was a bad game because it wasn't but it's not your typical zelda so you're missing out on a huge part of the fan base that probably didn't touch it like i bought it for the wii u and i never rebought it (laughs) you know what i mean it's like i didn't get a lot of play time out of the first one um myself but um I feel like if they if they if it looks as good as it should, I think they're in for a pleasant. I think people are in for a pleasant surprise this year. Like, I, I, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be great. It's going to get you back in that world of you know that ex- very expansive world of high roll. Oh yeah, uh, and you know you're going to be fighting against Calamity Ganon's army is what it really seems like, which. You know, there's parts of Breath of the Wild where I just kind of... Tr- I, I beat that game. It, it's sad. I Top five game for me. Beat it in 40 hours, which is the estimated game time. And I never went back to it. Oh, really? But I, yeah, but I still hold it as, like, top five game of all time. That's how, like, good it was for me. I... I... I tried a hundred. I tried a hundred percenting it, which I, I never got around to doing. But just to show you how much I played it, 
still like on the same save file, I put 195 hours into it. Jeez. Which I know there's more people. There's people who have more into it, but um, I mean, I would I would even restart it and do it again. Or so. Oh yeah. yeah. I- I think I'd restart and do it again for the story before I try to 100% the current save file. But yeah, I mean, that perfect game. I mean, I don't know what else to say about a perfect game. Oh, absolutely. And I think if they come even close to sniffing that on this, uh, you know, Hyrule Warriors Calamity, is that what it's called? Yeah. Mm hmm. It, it'll it'll sell, and I mean, Nintendo has a pretty strong three months here that you have a but you have the Mario celebration, but you mainly have 3D All Stars. Then a month and a half later, you have you know, Hyrule Warriors Calamity. I think that they should throw in, and this is just my opinion, some kind of Luigi's Mansion 3 DLC for Halloween, but that's just me. It would be smart. I don't think they're going to do it, but no, I think I think with Nintendo, especially, you know, the Nintendo owned developers, they really hit something hard and then they put it out to pasture after and then they move on to the next thing. I I, before we branch off into something else, it's just a little fun fact for you. I think you're going to really enjoy when you play Super Mario Sunshine. Um, But um the the same person who made uh well professor egad he you know he made luigi's um uh poltergust like it, the vacuum cleaner yeah he also makes um oh god flood flood yeah yeah i i i knew that they were related that way so because the game queue was weird and it had like luigi it's a mansion with ghosts in it, and Mario goes on a tropical vacation with Peach. <laughs> so weird set of you know first party Mario like main character games, and then with you know Legend of Zelda, you got Wind Waker, which is a complete departure from what they were doing. You got what uh, the end of its lifespan, the uh, Twilight Princess, which I would say that's a top ten game for me, story wise alone. Oh, I love Twilight Princess. Good one. But I'm I think Breath of the Wild definitely kicked its butt. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Um I I'm sorry, I don't know if you've seen gameplay, but Sony has a heavy hitter on their hand hands this year because uh the gameplay for Spider Man Miles Morales yeah. looks phenomenal. Yeah, I saw a bit of the gameplay, and I'm like, mm, this, might, this might be a console seller for me, even though I'm very adamant. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to buy a new console. Oh, my God. Like, it looks so good. But that's also coming out for PS4, too, so I can buy that at any point. Not for PS4. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely contemplating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I will definitely be contemplating it as well because I don't think Jared's getting back his PlayStation 4 once I get it. <laughs> oh. oh, that's right. I can let you borrow Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll just take that home next Friday. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have uh, anything else to cover this week? Uh, I don't think so. Other than just what I want to throw in and say that Marvel Avengers is not a terrible game that you and people should pick up and play it because it's pretty fun. I've watched some gameplay about with it. Um, I think the most addictive gameplay I've watched recently is still Fall Guys. Uh, <laughs> I haven't touched that in a while. I say it's kind of dying down, but I've watched some people on Twitch play Marvel Avengers. It looks fun. It genuinely looks fun. It, it it does. I mean, it has its flaws, but it is an online. Yeah. It, it, it's marketed as an online game, so a lot of the flaws are in that portion. But it really shines in the uh, single player campaign. I thought it was really, really, ex- really executed well. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then what else did they announce this week? There's another big one I can't remember, though. Oh, from my realm of Funko, there on September 8th, there's going to be Funko Virtual Con 4. Hmm. Um, it's going to probably crap the bed again, which is as expected with their online releases. If you're a listener and this is the only thing you listen to, for for New York City Comic Con uh, releases is going to be September 8th, and you have to be a member of the Funko Fun Club to even be considered to buy the exclusives. So you better hop to it. Yeah, I did that yesterday. <laughs> I think I was already a member, but I like made sure I'm like, am I a member? Okay, I got it. Because they're releasing. Did you know that Dum Dum Lollipops has a mascot? Um, I did not actually. Well, that's one of the ones that they're releasing that I'm trying to get my hands on. And then they're also releasing from McDonald's Land, uh, Captain Cook, pirate from McDonald's from like the 80s. Your parents would probably know a lot more about it than I would. <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I'm trying. There's, a, there's some other good stuff coming out from like Umbrella Academy to, you know, uh, they're, they're releasing a pizza rat. So <laughs> good stuff. But probably the next time you guys hear from us will be, I don't know. Do you want to do another one this weekend? Try to get back on schedule and then yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll try to get back on schedule. And then after that, we will be playing crash Four. Oh yeah. And I mean, I'm sure we'll be live streaming that too. So oh, yeah, stay tuned. Definitely. But um, to kind of wrap things up here, we always like to check in on our progress on Super Mario World. Um, what has our progress been over the last two weeks, Steven? What, what game was it again? Super Mario World. It doesn't ring a bell. Okay, I forgot. Um, you know that one for the uh, Super Nintendo that everybody loves? Uh say it's probably one of the best mario games um it has a front cover it has him riding yoshi with a cape on oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah we haven't gotten around that yeah so so would you say there has been no progress made on it yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> anyways uh so any closing thoughts here you know we're still in a pandemic so Try and get your hands on a PS5. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, make sure you beat everybody else. You got to get there. <laughs> make sure no matter... <laughs> <laughs> and then if you really want one, get on, get an Xbox as well, because, you know, just have the mind of flipping them and making money. Because, you know, you got to get nobody there. Else... <laughs> <laughs> That's all he said. Why? Uh, who said that? <laughs> me. I just kept saying, yeah, you know, because you got to get there. Like, what, is, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> you got to get there. You got to get the game stop on day one. Don't wear a mask. Yeah, d- yeah, please don't wear a mask. Just kidding. Everybody will avoid you. <laughs> You'll be able to get it first. <laughs> you can touch it first. No, but please do wear a mask. Yeah, no matter yeah, where you go outside of your own home. I'm, wa- uh, I'm wearing a mask and- while we're recording. Are you really? No. Okay. <laughs> I might be going to McDonald's after this. I'm not sure. And I will definitely be wearing a mask. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Uh, sure you get the uh, Travis Scott burger. Tell him Cactus Jack sent you. Okay. <laughs> uh, don't get that reference, huh? Nope. McDonald's did a collaboration with the rapper Travis Scott. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about that. It's a good burger. I'll tell you that it is a good burger. And it's a great deal, too, because... The quarter pounder meal is usually like nine bucks, but you get quarter pounder fries, bacon, uh, and a drink for like six bucks. Commercial ends Ooh. with make sure you go to McDonald's and tell them Cactus Jack sent you. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine all these like little kids who like this, Travis Scott has done a lot of collaborations, whether it's with Nike, uh, McDonald's now, Fortnite. They put him in Fortnite as a character, like all these of little course. Fortnite kids. All these little Fortnite kids going to me. Go, the Cactus Jack sent me. <laughs> Can I get some of that slime sauce? 
please. <laughs> Uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, we're not a political podcast at all, but make sure you register to vote uh, and vote, I guess, no matter who you're voting for. Make sure, you, you know, doing your civil duty of doing that. Uh, Steven, you probably don't have much to say on that. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but otherwise, let's all get excited for Crash Bandicoot 4. Yeah, get hyped for next week, baby. We'll be talking to you guys soon and seeing you guys on Twitch. Yes, everyone, be safe, everyone. to end it. So you got to kick them out. <laughs> this is awesome.